Just wanted to do an update on some of the work to the electrical systems that we've done on the boat. So I think we'll start off with the solar arch. Um, we've had this custom made by a company called Fisheye Fabrication at Opua in Northland and they did a fabulous job. It was really quite amazing the way um, it all came together, quite precise. Um, so it's a large diameter stainless and we've mounted on top of it um, two 380 watt panels. So we've got 780 watts of solar and each panel is uh, 48 volts. So it's quite a high voltage system, which is quite good. So it um, generally sends down quite low amps um, to the solar controller and then the solar controller, I'll show you that in a second, but um, we've got a 60 amp solar controller so that uh, really tops up the batteries quickly. We also had built into the design of the arch uh, two mounts for two floodlights which are really handy at night time um, being able to board and get into the tender and it even illuminates the cockpit quite nicely. Um, so that's been really good. We've got those switched on the main switchboard and also um, the aft navigation light. I got, we had a really old crusty one so I've put a two nautical mile limit uh, uh, light up on up high there um, so that should be good too. Um, on the starboard side there's three um, threaded mounts for antennae so we can put our GPS our AIS and when we get it the Iridium Go antenna up there so they'll be nicely mounted out of the way. Um, also we just had a couple of cleats put on just for tying up the tender if we have guests over there's a cleat each which is quite cool so yeah um, really good structure and we've seen just a massive difference with having this much solar for our battery health. Prior to that we had uh, some flexible panels um, initially we and they weren't really cutting it so then we got a 200 watt rigid panel which we had on our foredeck over winter which was good but it, mainly just because we were in the marina so we were plugged in for certain things so it wasn't really a true test but um, we've been out for just about a month now and it's um, late November, we've been out for November and normally by um, about I think it's fair to say 10am um, the, the um, solar control has gone into um, absorption mode which means 80% charge so that's with the refrigeration and freezer and everything running overnight so it's been really good really really worthwhile it's been uh, a major feature was accommodating a hydrovane um, and this was difficult and it meant that the arch is quite, actually quite tall um, initially we had a standard vane which is a skinnier but taller <clears throat> and it was just too much of an aesthetical problem. It just didn't look good to have that arch that tall. So we redesigned, we had it sort of just modified. Um, what it was before it was being, or while it was being built, we went for a stubby vein and the arch came down a fair bit. It's still quite tall, um, but I guess it's just uh, trade offs that you have to have on a boat. Um, sort of like really hard to get a perfect outcome. But overall, we're, I think it's fair to say we're very happy with the arch and the solar situation. I've made this four to one block and tackle, um, just with spliced up a soft shackle here and spliced up a dy Dyneema line. So it's just lax footed around the top, um, this high, uh, large diameter brace at the top, stainless. And it's really cool, it just means that we can um, easily lift our, lift the um, outboard drop it down and lift it up. Um, it was, it's the sort of thing you could really hurt yourself. You could pull it straight in your back or fall over or something. Someone would get hurt, I think. So it just makes it a lot more controlled, we've noticed, when, uh, it's still good to have two people, but a lot more controlled in getting the outboard up and down. And no doubt it'll be helpful for lifting other things as well. So that's another really helpful thing that we've done. So the battery bank is in the starboard cabin underneath the berth. When we got the boat there was just two flooded uh, lead acid batteries. So I had some battery boxes made up and then put in two 260 amp hour house batteries. So that's 520 amp hours in total for the house batteries. 
and also the starter battery is an 800 it's 800 cold cranking amps and um, that's been fine no problems and um, so yeah this has been quite a bit of work for me and uh, wiring it up over time and just there's been a number of things added on here we've got the uh, main solar controller it's a smart solar controller from Victron which is quite cool because it has an app that you can check in on um, through Bluetooth um, it's a 150 slash 60 so it's a 60 amp um, controller so this is the Victron app for the solar panels <clears throat> so it's quite good it just so shows the current status of what's happening with the arch um, so the panels are running at about 92 volts there's about an amp coming down from the panels to the solar con controller and then there's about 7 amps going from the solar controller to the batteries and the battery uh, voltage is about 13.8 um, it's all in float status at the moment so it's all fully charged and it's just um, being maintained full and I can hear the refrigerations running so what happens is um, as that clicks on and off the amperage goes up so um, the the monitor obviously realizes that the battery level is going down so it'll feed more power so it can just run the um, refrigeration the freezer and the fridge and everything else on the float quite happily so that's quite cool and then if you just flick on this um, this page here this is like a daily history so today, the, these are the different um, uh, charge phases. So there's bulk, absorption, and float. So you can see we've been getting to float pretty much every day, which is good. Um, and it, each column is a day. So this day was probably this day we were probably using our computers and inverter and stuff. We generated three kilowatt hours. Um, there was nine hours at bulk three hours at absorption which is 80 percent and one hour and 20 at float so even on that day we spent a bit, a bit of time in float which is cool and then it just shows down here the um the minimum and the maximum battery levels so for instance today the maximum battery level has been 14.74 and the minimum's 12.58 so that would have been first thing this morning and we've harvested 1.5 kilowatt hours today so really cool uh, app i recommend it with the smart controllers here yeah, um it's a little brother that's a 30 amp controller that's just a leftover from our previous system but we've got one flexible 50 watt panel up on the uh, head of the dodger which is connected directly to the starter battery so that's just dedicated to that one panel this is here this is another victron this is our um the charger which uh, plugs into the shore power um, so it's just another option we actually put that in before the solar we don't really need it uh, the solar is enough to <coughs> keep things charged but it's nice to have that option um, it's quite cool it has uh, good cycles charge cycles for the batteries which i think is really quite important so that's a good backup plan means we can uh, also run our refrigeration off the shore power which um, if we want to give the batteries a break, uh, that's a good option. We've got the NAC3 uh, autopilot computer down here as well. And so, yeah, it's uh, um, all our um, solar controllers, the shore power charger, and the NAC3 autopilot computer are all based here alongside the batteries. So, yeah, it's looking good. This is the main switchboard for the boat, the electrical switchboard. So uh, these are all um, switches but also also circuit breakers built in the old system was was original so it had the old glass fuses and a lot of the instruments and stuff that was on the switchboard had changed so it was all higgledy piggledy and in behind it was uh, a real mess there were a lot of chocolate box connectors um, really uh, sort of not great uh, work had been done in the past so we had an electrician aboard and um, put this switchboard together and also here's the um, charge um, display this is the display for the house batteries and the starter battery um, so we can keep a track on what's um, coming out of the batteries um, 
and then he did quite a tidy job here so there's this um, there's power coming up from the batteries up to behind here onto and then there's a series of bus bars so that's the negative bus bar and then you've got positive bus bars and it's quite a tidy system uh, the electrician has um, numbered each uh, given each one a unique number I think that one might be 14 and then it corresponds with 14 so they're in the same order as well but it's quite cool you can double check that you're looking at the same um, connection back there so uh, this is another really big improvement. It's quite good timing because when we've done this we've also put in a, a lot of new instruments so the, we're able to specifically switch them and update everything. Um, so we've got our uh, VHF, um, the plotter, the um, instruments, autopilot, uh, the fan for the composting head, cockpit lights, those are the new floodlights um, and so on here so everything's good. So just in the last few days I've installed this Fusion sound system. Um, one thing I like about it is it's got a Bluetooth connection. So if we're watching, say, Netflix on our iPad or listening to music on our phone, we can send it through the four speakers on the boat now. Um, so we've got four of these uh, Fusion speakers as well. And it's quite cool, it's set up in zones, so we can just like quieten it down in part of the boat if we want to. So that's switched straight off the switchboard. Um, which is cool. Another thing we've had done is upgraded our uh, navigation lighting. They were all old incandescent bulbs and like even the anchor light it would they would draw quite a bit of power um, maybe over an amp for the anchor light something like that so it's unnecessary so we've put on new um, new mast top light which is a combined tricolor and an anchor light We've got a new steaming light just below the second spreader. We've got new deck lights on the lower spreaders which illuminate the deck at night. Um, we've got a new LED uh, twin bow light, port and starboard. And of course there's a new um, aft light on the arch as well. So they're all uh, sealed units. The spreader lights are actually underwater lights so they're completely sealed. Um, and also we ran new wires for everything except for the spreader lights. So um, that's all been refreshed, the wires up inside the mast, uh, which actually wasn't too hard. The riggers helped with that. Um, and we put a new VHF antenna on the top of the mast as well, because the old one was very, it was very much aged. And a new um, VHF cable through down to our VHF uh, radio here. So it's quite nice that all of those cables are new and the lights are all new now. The switchboard's new. So you can kind of see the style of it. We've kind of just refreshed um, that, that system in particular. And they're all switched here. So we've got the anchor light, we've got the cabin lights, the anchor light, dry light, bow light, steaming lights, spreader lights and the panel lights which is just for night time, just puts that whole panel into night mode. And just in the last few days I've continued um, upgrading some of the interior LED lights. So um, there's these sealed units um, in the galley, this one the old, the old uh, lights were pretty poor, again they were incandescent bulbs, weren't sealed. So obviously here we have lots of steam and heat, um, so having sealed units is really good. And they're both um, uh, either red or white and they're also dimmable. If you just hold it down uh, it should cycle through. So. Um, yeah, we've got those uh, that style in the galley and above the nav navigation area, and then we've got um, this style elsewhere. Um, so it goes to blue, and then again they cycle in brightness. And at night, it's um, you know there's plenty of illumination now, uh, nice bright lights. So it's also been another electrical upgrade that we've done recently. Another electrical. Uh, part of the boat that we've upgraded uh, is the bilge pump system. So um, in here uh, we've got our main bilge pump. Um, it's a 2000 gallon per hour uh, pump here and we've got two float switches. Um, uh, this one is the alarm switch so that'll only go off if 
water reaches um, this high, okay, and then there's the operating bilge, uh, the switch down the bottom there, which is just above um, the bottom of the bilge. So it's a good, uh, it's proven to be a good system. We've got a keel stepped mast, so inevitably we do get some water making its way down inside the mast and into the bilge. Uh, it's not really a completely dry bilge. And so we've got a bilge pump under in that compartment which we can pump water into, um, into this one and then out. So the bilge pump empties under the galley sink. Um, so we routed it with some new plumbing into the plumbing underneath the galley sink and out through the through hole there. So yeah, th that's been quite a good system. And they, uh, they're switched here. Um, so, um, so they're on auto at the moment. Um, but you can use them on manual, just simply by using the switch there, or you can turn them off, which is currently. So, um, and the, the alarms are here too. So if it goes off, uh, you'll hear it through these units. So when we bought the boat, there were instruments for depth and wind speed and stuff, the Ray Marine system, which we still got, but in terms of a chart plotter or autopilot, there was nothing functional. So, um, We've got this uh, sea view pod system. So there's a main pod and then there's like these little wing mirrors. And so in here we've got our Zeus um, 3S chart plotter, uh, which we've been really impressed with. And there's a Triton 2 um, display on this side and on this side is our autopilot controller. So this is our Zeus chart plotter and uh, so there's a few different uh, main features. There's charts, which we've got Navionics. We've got a Navionics card in here. It's a little kind of SIM card thing with Navionics on it. Um, so uh, yeah, really good. We really like Navionics. Our, also, our this is another dis display of main um, instruments. Um, so we've got the 12 volt level. Um, we've got this temperature sensor is a, a NEMA 2000 sensor that I, sent, I mounted in the engine room. So that will tell us the air temperature around the engine, which I think will be useful just to monitor. I hope you enjoyed this video looking at what we've done with our electrical systems. Um, we've had a few requests for other boat work videos, so that's what spawned this one on. But also we'll be looking at some of our mechanical systems and some of our rigging and other things we've been doing. So if you're interested to see what we've been up to, what sort of improvements we've been doing, stay tuned. If there's a particular part of the boat that you'd like to know about, uh, feel free to ask us. We'd be more than happy to share um, any details or what we've been doing to improve things. Uh, remember to like videos, make comments and subscribe so that you receive notification of future videos. Thanks very much for watching.